and John Hudson, there is one big story and one only that literally we could talk the next four to five hours about and still not even scratch the surface. And that is the NDAA that includes a new UFO reporting area within the government passed by a vote of 89 to 11 today in the Senate. And now it's just a signature away from law. And that is the signature of President Joe Biden. I know, I know, I know. And, you know, I I haven't had a chance to read through all of it yet because I'm worried. I I, I hate to say this. I'm paranoid. I'm paranoid that something else changed. But it looks like it looks like we did it. And it looks like we got in. I mean, yeah, okay, there was some stuff removed that that some of us would, would have rather not. I mean, the some of the oversight and the the you know um, uh, you know science advisors and so forth. You know, that's that's certainly unfortunate. Um, and, um, and and I haven't had a chance to figure out yet whether um, whether it it uh, whether it's going to be established. Um, in the um, office of the uh, the Secretary of Defense, or whether it's going to be an Undersecretary of Defense, but one of the cool messages that you're seeing in a lot of the people who are writing about this is not just that the uh, u- that the UAP uh, language passed, but the, the the fact that the language passed was a rebuttal to what the DoD did the other day. That this Very was true. Congress saying, "No, you're not going to tell us." how we are going to run this program. We are going to tell you how you're going to run the program for us. And, and that, that's, that in itself is a big deal. Well, before we go any further, I was actually texting Lou Elizondo today. Okay. How is he doing? I, well, I'm going to read it to you. I said, I said, hi, Lou, Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio. Congrats today on your hard work and pressure on the UAP subject paying off big time. What you have helped accomplish is second to none. You deserve a big glass of wine and a nice campfire to kick back and relax. The UFO world is better off because of your efforts. He responded, thank you for the kind words. It hasn't been easy, but together I think we are all making a difference. Thank you at Spaced Out Radio for what all of your team does as well. So he's paying attention. He is. And I think that was some very kind words. We shared some more conversation that I'm going to keep private for now. But, I mean, look, whether you yeah. love Lou Elizondo or whether you hate Lou Elizondo or you don't believe him, the fact is the man, along with Chris Mellon, have worked their tails off to finally bring UFOs to the forefront that they are here. There's no turning back now in humankind's history. Correct. And and I let me just say that I I I had no notions that this would be a a likely uh goalpost for us to have on this journey, right? Like if I look back 5 years from now, 5 years you know, prior to now, I wasn't thinking, "Oh, and if we pull if our cards right and we do all the right things, maybe we'll get some congressional documents written." Like that no, that's not what I was thinking, right? But at the same time, now that you see it, now that you see what it means, you see how it's written and you see the language and and what it what it actually establishes, it's like, "Wow, this is huge. This is really really huge. This is really this is a really big deal and I really hope I, I, I sincerely hope that that Lou and and uh, that Lou Elizondo, that Christopher Mellon, um, that you know, I mean, there's a lot of people involved, but you know, certainly the primary people that have been you know dedicating majority of their waking hours toward this for for a couple of years now really do sit down and just have a glass of something they love and listen to something good because they they really deserve a, a pat in the back today. Um, this is um, you know, this is this is now this is now law and. Um, this is how you get things done in the United States. The budgets are what drive everything. And so the fact that this place is now going to have a budget, that's this is this is finally going to get real. Well, it's going to get real, but I mean, the big question that everybody's going to have on their heads here and I'm still a little hesitant on this is the fact of how much of that information is going to be released to the public. Now, there's still going to be a lot of classified information, whether or not the military reports it or not. Does the public have an opportunity to be screwed again on this? We're going to have to wait and find out. But, I mean, look, 
the one thing that I will say about this, and I've been very critical over the years, whether it was with the two of the Stars Academy, well, pretty much since then. But I will say this. People need to hold the government accountable. They have finally opened a door after 70 plus years of secrecy, if not longer, that we don't know about. And we need to see what's behind each and every one of those doors. And the public at large really needs to combine that pressure still and say, look, it's great that you signed this into law. It's great that you are officially looking into UFOs, UAP, whatever acronym you want to call them. But we need to know. We are the people putting you in power. We need to know. But, but here's the irony, David, is that, is that there's nothing about the UAP or UFO phenomenon that is in itself, by its very nature, classified. It's, it's all about how the data is gathered. And, and this is why, you know, all this is, all that's happening is it's a really good thing. And, and it, it might get some interesting things to happen. It might trigger some very interesting things over time. But ultimately, it's not really going to make a huge difference, at least right away to like, you know, your life or my life, because essentially they're not going to, a, a, most of the data that they're going to be chewing on is data that they can't share. And it's not because of what it, it's of. It's because of what was used to collect it. You know, you take, for example, um, the, D, the, the DOE has um, networks of sensors across the globe that operate from space and from land that do things like seismic sensors, do things like um, look for um, uh, blooms of, of energy via IR and so forth, right? Very, very sensitive, sensitive networks. They're designed to detect nuclear detonations. If a rogue nation is trying to like, blow up a nuke underground to test it, that they're supposed to catch it, right? But needless to say, this gear that they have catches a lot of other stuff. And there's some significant rumors that what this gear has been catching for a while now is objects appearing in orbit and then going down to the surface and then going back up to orbit and leaving. And there's supposed to be a significant amount of data of this happening, but it's all done on a system that isn't even supposed to exist. And we can't talk about what it does or how it works. Because the first thing people are going to do is is a bunch of countries are going to go, oh, cool. Now we know how to circumvent their 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 network. So it just, it's frustrating. Beyond well, that. the hard work. But here we go, John. The hard work officially begins now. Okay. Yes, it was hard to get this bill passed, but now they got to find the information. They yeah. have to figure out what can be released to the public, what can't under national security and obviously just obviously they're not going to be reporting a lot of the military encounters to the detriment of the public they probably will probably end up seeing more airliner encounters okay like whether it's united or whether it's american airlines a legionnaire where whoever it may be we may see more of those and it's going to be interesting to see if if eventually down the road, not right off the bat, maybe 10, 20 years down the road, if they tap into something like MUFON and start looking into personal reports as well. Well, I mean, eventually, right? I mean, I mean, that's the funny, you know, the funny thing that you all have, that we all have to remember is that is that groups go through arcs just like people do, right? And so there are there are whole groups of people that are right now beginning that arc that some of us started six months ago, some of us started five years ago, some of us started longer ago, where you start out looking at the propulsion systems. And five years from now, you're you're looking at NDA NDEs and 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 uh, and and all that crazy stuff, and you're watching Grant Cameron videos, and and they're gonna have to go through that same transition. I, I mean that everyone everyone has to go through it. Everyone has to, and it means it's not the same. It's different for everyone. But I mean, my point is, is that they're all going to have to go through that transition. So what that means is that they are going to get to a point where suddenly they're going to wake up and go, oh, there are contactees. There are actually people that think that, that they've, they've talked to them, to them. 
we and we can interview them oh my god and they're gonna lose it and they're gonna start interviewing all these people and it's gonna be this huge you know buffet but it's gonna take a long time irony or coincidence that this vote happens the day before the fourth anniversary of the new york times article serendipity just you know beautiful serendipity um you know there there were so many um you know th these bills have to be you know negotiated by certain dates and and signed by certain dates to be able to continue funding for for you know for for programs and so forth and so you know my guess is is that you could have predicted what date they were going to vote on this six months ago if you actually like understood how congress was functioning you could probably predicted it back then we just didn't know what it was um, so my guess is, is it's just beautiful serendipity, just the universe kind of doing a wink and a grin. It is but kind it, of ironic. It, it really is. It's is. kind of beautiful. It's kind of, and the thing to remember, too, is that there's a lot of other stuff in this bill, right? This is a big bill, right? That has a bunch of stuff about the Space Force um, uh, allocations in it. And and honestly, it has um, – and and what, what uh, Senator Gilwind is, is really probably more passionate about than anything else is that it has a, an, an incredible overhaul – of the um uh of how um you know uh, sexual cases are handled um in the military completely changing the entire structure of how um any claims of any kind of um, sexual misconduct are handled and that's what she's really in the news talking about right now so there's a lot of other really good things in this bill it's it's a, it's, it's a very very important bill it's very important indeed in regards to it but it all comes down to our listeners okay not just our listeners but the public in general, because the majority of the public is not going to understand what this means. No. Okay. All right. They're not going to have a clue. They're going to see some byline in the paper. Great. Now we're wasting money, taxpayers' money on looking for fake UFOs or whatever. That's the attitude that the majority mm -hmm. of people are going to have out there, which is pretty insane. If they took the time to look into it, they would see it's a much different picture. But we're not going to get that. You know, so, I mean, how is this going to really catch the people of the United States, knowing that they are now officially on the taxpayer hook for looking into unidentified aerial phenomena? Um, in, in any deal, everyone must receive consideration. And so essentially we have to determine some way of offering these people something from this that they actually want and i don't i gotta admit i'm not super confident that i'm going to be able to find such a thing anytime soon um you know i mean i i because ultimately you know well, look during any period in time a large percentage of people are this way but during these periods of time even more people are this way everyone most people are just treading water right and so the only thing that they're really caring about are things that they're going to impact them in the next 24 hours right next 48 hours and so all this stuff, it's it's for most people, it's like, okay, well, that's great, but how's it going to impact me next week? Well, it probably won't, right? Now, what's interesting is your guest tonight. What I one of the things I loved about what she talked about was was you know the the commonality between what a lot of people get when they start going through this experience, they start going through this process, and talking about you know uh, losing her, losing the fear of death. Which I know, you know, not everyone gets the benefit of, but you know, like you know, you know our friend Dave here. But um, but I thought it was interesting that she brought that up as and see to me that's different. Like if you if you said to people, okay, you know, um, no, it's it's more that this is a, the beginning of a learning process, and through this process, you're gonna learn a bunch of new things that you didn't know before. And one of the things you're gonna get out of it is you're probably gonna lose your fear of death. Like that's interesting. Like that's something that I think people would be like, okay, I'll watch that, right? But no one's going to say that. And so uh, I don't know how you motivate people. Like, I'm, I don't even know how I motivate, you know, my brother or my wife or my sister to care about this stuff. Right. I mean, for them, I it's just like, you, you know, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's 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 just, you know, it's just the way it is, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know if you can. But I mean, either way, this isn't, I think for the UFO public, we need to understand that this isn't a a sprint. This is still a marathon. Oh my yes. You know, we're nowhere closer. Now, I, I'm still would love to hear someone tell me why now. That I is still, a I, 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 I think it's the radar, Dave. I really do. 
I think it's just I coincidental. Know. I think it's just I think technology. Well, I just did have a talk. Up. I did have a talk with Bob McGuire earlier today, and or it was yesterday. Pardon me. And I I said to him, I said, Bob, I said you realize that you are the right guy at the right time to figure out the whole Fitbit information. Because I believe Fitbits can record abductions. I really do. Do you realize realize how freaking cool that would be? I mean, do you realize like the market that would create how many other devices I would want to build to put on your body? Oh, my God. I would want to cover you in telemetry. Well, when, when Science Bob and I had our, I don't know what it was. A number of months ago, his Fitbit read that he was awake for 90 minutes. And had movement. And had movement. Now, Jonathan Davies, who's been a guest on this show, people know him, he actually put it out on Twitter, and other people have checked their Fitbits who claim to be abductees or contactees. Ooh. And they have seen times when they have been awake when they thought they were sleeping. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So who, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, sorry, deep breath. There is something who, here, dude. Who's, who's collecting this data? Nobody. What? That we know of. Mm. Nobody. Okay, all right, well, maybe I'll have to. So you may That's... have radar Wow. up wow. in these multi-million dollar aircraft, or you may have a couple hundred dollar Fitbit on your wrist that tells you when you're awake when you're not supposed to. I mean, honestly, like telemetry is a beautiful thing. I mean, you would not believe how many uh, marriages have been um, have been uh, ended over Fitbit data. Um, you would not believe how many how many legal documents have been contested and then won or lost over Fitbit data. I mean, it, it's it, it's 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 big time stuff, right? I mean, it's it's human telemetry. And boy, man, if you could start really, especially if you could start finding some commonality between all that data. And the thing is, is that, you know, we've had cases. There was another case. I can't remember the guy's name where where he um, he had uh, his phone was was tracking it. And he he basically felt like he got pulled up into his ship and and he actually got an Apple engineer to look at his phone. And and from all that they could tell, his phone for a period of time was floating above his house. I never heard what, that story. What what could you? I gotta figure out where that was from. I think it was from like a documentary or something. Um, and uh, and it's like, okay, so what do you do with that one? You know, I mean, at some point, people have to start like taking this data seriously. I mean, I don't know. It, it would be very interesting, as Bob McGuire and I talked about it. It would be very interesting to see or to have people studied who are abductees wearing fitbits and the thing is to kick off a study like that you only need 10 people that's it well and what i find super interesting is that why aren't the like why aren't the fitbits being interrupted i mean does this mean that we've been could we could have been collecting data this whole time I mean, should we just be like t- like filling stuffed cows full of telemetry machine devices and then like hoping that the cow gets a du- I mean, like every I, I cow mean, in North America and the world is going to get a Fitbit now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every cow is going to get a totally. Fitbit. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? Unbelievable. Oh, Unbelievable. Man. It is something to track. And today is a. Very good day in ufology. Yeah. Whether like I said, whether you love Luis Elizondo, Chris Mellon or not, whether you believe them or not, whether you think they're they're you know trolls to the UFO community or not, every now and again you gotta bite your tongue and give credit where credit is due. And these gentlemen brought help play a major part in bringing UFOs to the latest American defense budget. And now we see where it goes. And and, and just as one right. more point, one more point is that one of the things this is going to lead to is it's going to start legitimizing enough that we finally might start seeing grant movement in the academic world. Absolutely. John Hudson, thank you for eating up all of the final half hour on this all-important topic. 
We'll see you in the after show. And and thank you so much once again for being just a rock star for us here on the Unbiased UFO Report.